Welcome to the Poor Man's Gourmet Kitchen, where we share gourmet recipes at a low-budget wonder. Now check this out. And to start our biscuit out with some water, I'm going to use tomato bouillon. This will help give it some tomato flavor. Give it a good stir. And set your heat on medium. Now, as far as our vegetables go, we've got some onions, tomatoes, ginger, parsley up top, some basil, carrots, some celery. This is what we'll be using. So you can see I'm finishing up the tomatoes here. That's going to be the bulk of our bisque. Just add those to the food processor. Some carrots. And of course, let's chop up this celery and we'll add that as well. Leaves are okay to go in. Perfect. Oh, I dropped one. A little bit of parsley. And we'll throw in some fresh basil leaves. Now that we're secure, go ahead and blend this for a bit. Don't forget the ginger and a few garlic cloves as well. Three sounds good. And once again we're going to blend. Now to our stock, we're going to add everything we just blended to it and give it a good stir. Some red wine. This is a sweet burgundy wine. It will enhance the flavor. Now back to the cutting board, I'm going to cut up an entire onion. That will be our next step here as we go to the skillet. But you want all these just nice congruent slices. And there's my daughter and my wife. Don't mind them. They're really hungry for some lobster bisque. Hot pan and some butter. Take all that onion to it. We're just going to saute this for a while. We're going to get it to where it's just about caramelized. As you can see, that's got some good color in it now. And I'm adding cornstarch here because we're going to need this bisque pretty thick. I'm going to add the cream over the top of this after we stir it in real good. Just like so. Now, this is a little bit of a tedious process. You're going to stir the cream in, you're going to boil it, you're going to stir the cream in again. And this will go back and forth until you added all the cream that needs to go into this bisque. And as soon as it thickens, which you can see here it has, we're going to add some Italian seasoning. Italian seasoning has thyme, majorum, rosemary, sage, basil. So obviously those are some good ingredients to add for flavor. Now see how it's thick enough? It's ready to be added to the soup. Now this tomato is rolling boil, which is good. As I'm adding this, it'll incorporate a lot better. And you can see that the bisque gets its thickness from adding this boiled cream that a good stir and we're gonna let it reduce now here I've got some langostino lobster tails which are just little miniatures not much bigger than uh, crawfish tails but I'm taking half of it and we're gonna cut it up thin this first half I'm gonna to add to the bisque so as it's reducing it gets the lobster tail flavor this half we'll add later okay so break it up, add the first half 
chopped up small pieces first. The reason we're doing this is langostino lobster tails are already cooked, so we don't want to get too chewy by cooking them too long in the bisque. But we do want the flavor, so we'll stir that in and let it reduce. Add some pepper, and we'll wait for this to completely reduce. Like that, you can see I've lost about a half inch. Now we're going to add the rest of the tails. This tells you that it's thickening up exactly the way you want it to. You can see here, it's getting pretty thick. See how it floats and stays right there on top when I lift it up? It's not dropping to the bottom. So that tells you you're ready to serve. And what I've got here is miniature French bread. It's sub sandwich style. We're chopping it up here so we can toast it. Looks good, doesn't it? In fact, I think I'll eat this piece right here. Now, what we're going to do with it is add some garlic, some salt, and some vinegar. When it comes out of the oven, we're going to brush them lightly with this. It's going to add a lot of good flavor to those crouton style toast pieces that we'll, we'll be adding to our bisque. Don't be shy with it. It really does add some good flavor, so add as much as you want. Doesn't even hurt to throw a few of those chunks on there if you want. It's good. Throw them right here on the side of your, your soup bowl. Start adding your bisque. This is the best part, by the way. Mouth watering, just watching it. Man, I can't wait to eat it. Right to the top. And I'll garnish it here with just a piece of parsley. Right in the middle. And there you have it. Lobster bisque right here in the poor man's gourmet kitchen. All right, here we go with our five onions sweet onion, a red onion, a yellow onion, white onion, and of course our green onions. Now I'm only going to use half of each one of these onions, but you need to cut each one in half anyway to get your slices. And I like to cut with the grain, not against it. And I cut half moon shaped onion slices. You're looking for about this thickness right there. And using only half of each onion will give us one full plate of onions. And the only onion we have left now is the green onion. Now on a hot pan you're going to melt a whole cube of butter. Drop all your onions right in there. And you want to add a full tablespoon of sugar to help these onions caramelize while they saute. Just give it a good stir. Now here's my beef broth. I'm going to add a couple bay leaves. Also, some thyme. And a little bit of red wine. Now when it comes to our soup crouton, I like to use this garlic Texas toast. It's the perfect size for every individual bowl. I like to line those out on a pan and throw them in the oven and get them completely dried out. By now our onions should be caramelized. As you can see there's some fantastic color in there. exactly the way you want your onions. Not overdone, just a nice golden color to them. Just pour them right in your beef broth. And I usually let it simmer for about another 20 minutes so that onion flavor completely infuses with the soup base. And here's our croutons. 
Let's grab one of them here and I'll show you both sides. So you can see it's cooked through and through. And now that our soup is done, we want to remove the bay leaves. We don't want to choke on one of those. And here's our finished product. Here's our bowl and a crouton and we'll just ladle right over the top of it. sure there's enough beef broth in there. And take some of this Gruyere cheese right over the top as well. And then throw that in the oven under a broiler for just a couple minutes. And let's see how she looks. Oh yeah. See that nice color across that cheese is exactly what you want. And there you have it. French onion soup right here in the Poor Man's Gourmet Kitchen. Thank you for watching and be sure to stop by poormansgourmetkitchen.com for more recipes and exact ingredients. First thing we want to do is add an entire can of hominy with the juice to a pot. Then using the can as a measuring device, we're going to use the same exact amount of chicken broth. Now the secret to this menudo is enchilada sauce, and it's not just any sauce, but we'll talk about that here in a minute. Once you give this a real good stir, then we're going to come back and we're going to add a stick of celery. Now we don't want chunks of celery in this, so we're just going to break this up down the center so it can release flavor as it cooks. Now my enchilada sauce is done fresh and it only takes 10 minutes to cook and add a few ingredients to the blender before you get this nice smooth sauce. So if you want this recipe just hang out to the end of the video and I'll give you a link. Now let's take a look at our tribe. You really want the honeycomb style which leaves this fluffy pattern on top and really all you've got to do is determine a good spot to slice it in half so you can make it manageable to cut your strips. And I like to cut these long lengths first and then I just cross grain it like this. And once you've got a good pound to a pound and a half cut out, you can go ahead and add it to your soup. But just so you know, if you're real sensitive to tripe, you can add shrimp or you can add pieces of pork. Good alternatives. Then you add a little bit of black pepper, give that a good stir. Then you want to bring this to a boil, then reduce the heat to medium high and let reduction take over. This is a good time to chop some scallions and some fresh cilantro. After about 30 minutes you can check your reduction from the top where it started down to where the soup is now. There's about an inch of play here. That's how much soup is reduced. Now we know we're good to go. So I'm going to yank out the celery, give it one last stir, and serve. Just be sure to come back and top it with those scallions and the fresh cilantro. And there you have it. Menudo, right here in the Poor Man's Gourmet Kitchen. Thank you for watching, and be sure to stop by poormansgourmetkitchen.com for more recipes and exact ingredients. Using chicken stock is the preferred method when you're making the soup, but just to prove that it can be done, we're going to fill this up with water and go with Noor's Chicken Bouillon. Just a few tablespoons of this will make it taste all right. Make sure you give it a good whisk and set your heat on high. Now, vegetables. We've got broccoli, we've got celery stock, we've got an onion, and some carrot. Just to show you how we chop up the broccoli, real simply, just start removing the head pieces like so.
Once you get all that accomplished, you can throw it into a food processor so you can start chopping this up real fine like. Add some celery. And the carrots. Now, I don't know about you, but I like my soup chunky. So I'm not going to puree the vegetables. I'm going to pulse it until I get it to my desired consistency. Just like that chunky. Now just add it to the stock. Make sure you give it a real good stir. Your heat should be on medium from here on out while we get the rest of it going. Chop up this onion. Nice and fine pieces. And we're going to add that to some butter in a hot pan. And we're going to saute this for about 15 to 20 minutes. So you can see I'm getting some color. But I want to add this sugar to help it caramelize. Give this a good toss. We're going to let it sit for a few more minutes so it can caramelize and turn into this. Now, this is when we add our flour. We're going to stir that in as well. Make sure it's even. We don't want any pockets of flour in our soup. But this is going to act as a thickening agent. We're going to add our cream, and that flour is going to help it reduce and thicken up quicker than you believe. see it's already getting thick and as soon as it turns pasty like this you're going to go ahead and add it to the rest of the soup. Once again we're stirring. Make sure you get it all incorporated. Now this is a good time to sneak in close so you can see my pepper. Just add some pepper don't worry about the salt because the bouillon flavor will take care of that. Now the bread bowl is simple. Turn it upside down and cut all the way around the edges. When you make it all the way around, take your fingers underneath to the center and just pop it out. No big deal. Now, we're going to toast it in the oven. I put it on a high broil and I watch it real close so I don't burn it. And it comes out just like that. Nice. Start out in our soup. See, that's beautiful. You can't deny that doesn't look delicious. Now I like a little mild cheddar cheese over the top of it. And there you have it, cream of broccoli soup right here in the poor man's gourmet kitchen. Here I've got a whole onion I've already cut in half. I'm going to quickly cut it into slices and then into half inch pieces. I'm also going to chop some fresh parsley. Now I'm going to pour some olive oil in a hot pot. I'm going to dump that onion right in it. And I'm going to cover with a little kosher salt and black pepper. And you just want to saute this until it turns golden brown. Now here I've got two russet potatoes. I like to cut these lengthwise here into strips. And I turn them onto their sides and cut them lengthwise once again 
and then I'll cut bite-sized pieces on the cross grain. Now compliments to my brother's garden, I've got a fresh peeled carrot and parsnip. I just cut off the ends on each one of these and then proceed to cut these each into bite-sized pieces. Now with the celery I like to just cut it in half and then I just cut it into smaller pieces. And that should cover all the vegetables we need for this stew. Now back on the stove you'll see the onion is turned a golden brown. So I'm going to just add some broth. And you can use vegetable broth or chicken, whichever you prefer. But you want to add your chopped vegetables right to it. And once you get it settled on in there, just throw the lid on top so you can finish preparing the other ingredients. Now here I've got a beef chuck that weighs about a pound and a half. I'm just going to season it with kosher salt and pepper. You just want to flip it over here. Get both sides. Then lay it down in a hot pan. Then I'm going to spend about five minutes here cooking on the first side. Give it a quick flip here. And after just a few more minutes of cooking, I'll lay it down on the cutting board and let it rest for about five minutes. But you want to take advantage of that flavor that's left in the bottom of that pan. Just add a little bit of water. Most people call this a fond. And it's a great start to make any sauce or gravy. And you can do all of this from scratch if you want to. But personally, I'm going to provide a cheat. The secret to my beef stew is both chicken and brown gravy. So you can either make yours from scratch or you can pick up two of these for less than a dollar. Just add the powdered contents to a couple cups of water and just give it a quick whisk and then you just add this to the fond on the stove. And after just a few minutes of cooking you've got gravy. But that's my little cheat so it's up to you whether you want to use it or not but I just pour it right over the top of all those vegetables and it makes a nice thick beef stew. Just add that fresh parsley we chopped earlier and a little bit of dill. And once you start stirring everything in, you'll start seeing it come together. But now you want to go ahead and slice that steak into length long slices. Then cross cut it into bite sized pieces and tell me that doesn't look delicious. Now just add all of that beef right to the pot with all of our other ingredients. Now just stir all that together one last time just before you throw the lid on it and let it simmer for about an hour. And when you're done it should look something like this. And you can go ahead and serve. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel and hang out to the end of this video for some more recipes. And there you have it, beef stew right here in the Poor Man's Gourmet Kitchen. Thank you for watching and be sure to stop by poormansgourmetkitchen.com for more recipes and exact ingredients.